next? What's coming next? Let's go riddles a bit. Um, what would be, according to you, the most iconic product of the second industrial revolu revolution? Cars? No, no, no. No? No, no, come on, we, uh, we rehearsed, you remember? Why did you always... Uh, uh, tra trains? Yes, okay. trains, you know. Long before the internet, there was an, another network, the railway. So, well, about 150 years ago, um, railways started a new age of connectedness among human beings. So, I get the question we have to ask now is, what's going to happen to this railway now that the third industrial revolu revolution is headed at us? And what's really interesting now is that for a traditional railway company, and there are many of them all around the world, they're moving from operating trains to operating all kinds of mobility. And this is possible due to a digital transformation, but not only a digital transformation, but also a cultural transformation within those companies. And one of those companies is SNCF, which is a a partner of, of WeShare, and one of the people leading this digital and cultural transformation within SNCF is its uh, chief digital officer, Yves Tirod. Please welcome on stage Yves Tirod. Hello. Hello. Who will be uh, interviewed by Vincent Edin. So, guys, we just had a, a, a very informal conversation, and they thought they would do this q French. Uh, so it's really cool because they're going to do it in English, but maybe partially in French at the end, because I know there are also lots of French speakers in the room who would uh, love to hear them speak in, in French. Thanks. Thank you, Antonin. We thought uh, we were going to speak in French, so uh, we'll, we'll try to adapt, because uh, SNCF is a very modern company and they know how to adapt. Uh, so maybe we'll speak a little longer. Uh, this way, you'll uh, have uh, another occasion to say that uh, SNCF has some problem with the schedule. All right. Uh, now, more, more globally, we're going to speak about uh, how collaborative economy can uh, uh, actually transform uh, a huge company like the SNCF. Last year I was already honored to be here on uh, WeShare and we had um, a talk about how collaborative economy can empower large companies and we had uh, big companies. Uh, we had Orange who's uh, 180,000 people and you're even bigger because you're 200 and 60,000 people, so that's kind of huge. Uh, I want to warn you that last year I can see a, a, a Castorama sign over there, and we had the CEO of Castorama, and now she became CEO of Kingfisher, so actually we share is a, a, a way to get a boost in your career, so maybe next year you'll be CEO of SNCF, but right now you're in charge of the digital. So, so say hi to Guillaume Pepi. Um, now, more seriously, in French, we try to oppose things like we have Blablacar and then our French ministry, Emmanuel Macron, said uh, we're going to have uh, cars, uh, buses, and then uh, we, have, uh, we have the train. Do you think that's uh, a right way to approach transport in the future, or can we, can we mix them? Uh, good morning, everybody. Now, first of all, I think that to oppose two different uh, transportation means is completely stupid. I think we need to consider what we want to target today is people traveling all together. It could be in a train, in a bus, in a coach. It could be also via blah, blah, car or whatever. What is important for us is today we are considering, we are considering that something in France, 15% of all the transportations are done like that. It's not enough. I think single people in a car today this is I, I believe this is the massive transportation mode and we all believe that we have a unique cause which is to make the the collaborative transportation the the the, the de facto standard of the world and this is not easy and i think we cannot do, we cannot do it alone with a, i would say an old industry like a sncf we need to do it, to do it all together including all the share economy. And your, your belief is that actually in uh, 2030, I guess, we'll have uh, doubled that standard and come to 30% of people 
Uh, transporting uh, by uh, collective models? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, if I, you know, in, a, in big companies like SNCF, we have some strategic framework and things like that. So we, have, we believe that maybe in, uh, in, in the next decade, we can double the size of this market. So it means that 30% of all the transportation mode will be collaborative or with many people in the same transport. This is what we have in, 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 in mind. And, and, and we believe that digital is a key driver for that. Without digitalization, it's impossible to think about such, such a revolution. That, that's kind of huge, so we can, we can actually foresight your philosophy, but uh, technically and uh, physically, how is digitalization going to impact on your trains? Oh, let's say, you know, for a very big company like SNCF, you, you say it's, it's a, a large number of employees, a, a, a large number of also of, of customers. Have in mind that every day, every day we have 10 million people traveling using our trains in the world. 10 million. So a lot of people, a lot of customers traveling, a lot of people which are maybe uh, uh, people using our trains uh, to go from their home to the to the to the um, to the business center and so on to just just work and what we want to do is to, to drive let's say the digitalization of this company working on three pillars the first one is really how to make sure that we will change i would say all the interfaces with the customer and the way people or customer will use our offering the second thing is how to make sure that we will empower our salaries, meaning that we will give them a lot of new digital uh, means and, and, and tools. And the third one, we, maybe it's one of the most important ones, is how we will completely shift the way we operate our trains and network. This is the digitalization of the industry, which is a, a, a new area, I think, for for, for, for digital. So you were telling me that you'll have connected objects everywhere uh, that can do like a positive minority report by uh, anticipating the, the accidents and the catastrophe. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know how you say it in English, but in French, uh, it's a word that everybody that uh, take a train know it's catenaire. Uh, catenaire is like a, a, a big industry, not so relatable, which, uh, which sometimes fail. And you think that with the digital, you can actually prevent accident. Could you explain how it works? Yeah. Yeah, again, if we go back to the, to the basics, I think the, 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 the main idea is, is to improve the quality of service and also the safety. That's the main, the, really the, the first priority of our company is that. And in order to do that, we, have, we, need, we need to leverage the new technologies. And I, I believe that there is one breakthrough today, which is the Internet of Things. So everybody is thinking, is speaking about Internet of Things, blah, 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 blah. Maybe I, I want to be very concrete. We have, a lot oh. we have a lot of new sensors. With now these sensors coming, by the way, from, from the consumer market, will be cheaper and cheaper. And these sensors will be autonomous and wireless. So we have many ideas. So the use cases are the first one. The temperature, temperature of a rail, as an example. This is something which is maybe for you not a very important parameter. It's a quite, it's key for us because depending on the temperature of a rail, of a railways, you can increase the speed of a train or not. You imagine the, the consequence for the customer? So if we know that, we can do that. The other thing is that vibration. You can, we can have maybe sensors able to uh, capture vibration. And we put, we put them under, the, under the, the railways. And we can improve also a lot of things. So if we need to change some, so, so, some switch or things like that, we have two, 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 two things to do. Either we do it when the railway or the catenaire or whatever has been broken. So it means that 
We stop the service, and it's not good for everybody, as you can imagine. Either we anticipate, which is what we call uh, the predictive maintenance. And we can only do think about predictive maintenance if we're able to deploy a large number of sensors uh, with some uh, networks and whatever, everything's necessary, just to be able to change our industry. But again, it will change completely the way we operating trains. So that's for the, 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 the trains. I'd like to go back to the customers and see what they can share in more in the future. So uh, are we at the end of a digital, ah, digitalization of the trains? Uh, are, are there going to be Wi-Fi everywhere? And uh, could, we, could we actually destroy this idea that the money that SNCF is putting into the, the Wi-Fi and the internet has an impact on prices? Because, you know, like, it, it sometimes happens in the debates. Could, could you crush that idea? Yeah, of course, of course, of course. I think uh, maybe if we if you go back to the to a customer needs, uh, the first basic need of a customer is to get an, a wireless access in the train with a good quality of service. It's of use for everybody. It's of use for you. And uh, this is something as important as to have, uh, so let's say, uh, clean toilets in the trains. So, so we're not speaking about. Uh, um, nice, nice to have things, but really things which are considered by your customer as, as a part of a service we offer to him. So, um, um, in terms technically, if we go back to, uh, to the situation a long time ago, let's say 10 years ago, 10 years ago, the in our trains, sorry, the situation in our trains was very, very simple. We have a few businessmen using the laptop, and in fact, uh, they were using especially the Eurostar, you know, going from Paris to London. And uh, uh, the use case was just to download their email, and, and it, was, it was like that. It was a long time ago. It was 10, 10 years ago. And so for that, in fact, the situation, the, the technical solution we put in place was just to equip, I would say, the rolling stock, all the trains, with Wi-Fi, and to get the internet access via satellite. So the only thing is that after the operation of smartphones and so on, I have in mind that two thirds of our customers have an iPhone, uh, which is much bigger than the, uh, the penetration rate of the population. And so that they need access, not only access to the email, they need video, they need, but by the way, they need bandwidth. So it, 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 it leads us to change completely the way we, we, we need to, 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 to implement the technology. It, and in fact, the only way to get wireless access was to work very closely with the mobile operators and to use the 4G and tomorrow the 5G. So uh, the, the, what we will do, and I think many of other train operators, also bus operators will do the same, will be just to work closely with them to help them to deploy their 4 and 5G network close to all railways, meaning that people in the train will get directly the access via the public network. In some specific case, especially the TGV, our high-speed train, we will be forced to install Wi-Fi inside because it goes too fast that we need, let's say, to, to repeat the signal. So again, we need both, and at the end of the day, what we don't want to be able, we want the service to be free, a part of the service we offer to the customer. So time is flying, like in the TGV. Uh, I'd like to finish uh, with a question on the data, uh, the open data, and what you're going to do with it. What, what uh, can the customers share? How is it going to affect their life? I know that some TGV, uh, they ride for like five, six hours, so are you going to make a partnership with Tinder or Grinder to be gender friendly so that everybody can find someone in the train? Yeah. Or, or is it bigger than that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I think it's, big. it's, it's quite bigger than that. But uh, again, um, you know, in a big company like uh, SNCF, and I think for the, for the main big companies coming from the 20th century, you know, you always want to reinvent by yourself what could be done outside your company. And it's not of use, I think it's a cultural change, a cultural shift, when you need to work with third parties. 
And this is now our strategy. So I think this is the reason why we have decided to open our data. Opening our data doesn't mean that we want our data to be, uh, to be free. We need a consistent business model for that. But we, are already, we have already opened 50, uh, 50 set of data. You can go to our site, which is data.sncf.fr, and you can have access to them. And the idea is really to build, a, let's say, a, a developer community working with us, doing the promotion of train. And I think, and this is my really what I strongly believe in, by doing that, we will have more people promoting the train, people from diverse in industry promoting the train and making us more, uh, let's say, uh, profitable and, uh, and making the train more sexy for everybody. That's all the success we wish you. Thank you very much you uh, very for much. accepting to speak in English at the last minute.